And we are good. We're on, guys. Well, hey. hey. There we are. So, welcome, everyone, to Big Talk Caffeinated and Opinionated, where two caffeinated and opinionated individuals talk about things that they don't really know much about. With a slight change this week, there's not two individuals who know nothing. There is, in fact, three. Hi. Yeah. Today, we're here with Will. Um, Will and Matt are uh, good friends, and um, Will's, Will's kindly graced us with his presence this week. Just Will, though. There's no last name. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're like, um, like Madonna or Cher. Yeah. I think, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and you're currently a man of mystery with, mm-hmm. with no visual. The yeah. Phantom. Phantom, Phantom Will. Now you've got two names. <laughs> you're normal. <laughs> Well, uh, tell, tell us a bit about what you're about, Will. Yeah, just so, make today. Uh, Matt, and I, Matt and I know each other from a couple of years ago. We met on the set of a show that I used to work on. Hmm. Um, now I run a website called camelmoon.com. Mm-hmm. And we have uh, all types of different conversations. Essentially, it's all, it's all beeping in and out. Um, so essentially, camelmoon.com, it's like... Uh, it's a political type talk show, but we talk about pop culture type things. Hmm. Um, so we talk about sort of the implications. Let's say, for example, uh, you know, Avengers, right? That made two point seven billion dollars. Well, I don't really care so much about the review of the movie, but I'm a little bit more interested in why it made so much and the surrounding politics is for you know what that means and the implications of the future for cinema and those types of things. Right. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a little bit more uh, academic, but uh, you know we we have a good following, and uh, you know I, I thought <laughs> I thought you guys would be would be a, a good match for it. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean I think those convers- it's good to have those kinds of conversations rather than arguing with each other on various platforms about what's right and what's wrong and just shouting at each other. Right, because on in the end of the day, you know, I mean, what do you do? You do you in tribalism, you know? Yeah. I mean, it gets you nowhere, mm. and. Uh, Look, if I see one more fucking video on YouTube telling me why The Last Jedi is the worst movie ever made, I'm going to fucking kill somebody. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't care anymore. I don't need 10 reasons why Batman versus Superman sucks. It's like, it doesn't mean anything, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let, let's have a little well, bit less of a politically charged conversation and maybe more of a politically aware one. Yeah. Game of Thrones is the new punching bag, I've noticed. Yeah, right. Even, even we did that, like... <laughs> <laughs> we oh, got on God, Game yeah. of Thrones' back for a bit. Mm. Yeah, it's like a yeah. it's like a vortex. It just sucks you in. <laughs> it sometimes it's hard to pull yourself out of it. I mean, even as it was happening, the last season, you know, my co-host had never seen. Well, well, he seen the first four or five seasons, but he wasn't, you know, caught up. Mm. And mm. I, you know, I was just like, kind of like, telling him, like. Yeah, it's just, you know, it shits the bed, you know? It's like, I, it's almost like you can't help but bring it up because, you know, you go online and you see you're on Facebook or wherever you are. Mm. And it's, it's just, just what everybody's talking about it, you know, just through osmosis alone. It's hard not to form an opinion on it. Mm. Mm. Well, we've got episode nine coming out, so that'll all reignite. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready, get ready to see the word Mary Sue plastered across <laughs> every YouTube video. Sure. So let's have a let's have a conversation that's not about The Last Jedi today and instead talk about a um... I'm leaving. Goodbye. <laughs> that's it. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> so this was a topic that we um that we sort of stumbled upon on our tangential musings uh a couple of weeks ago i believe and um, we, were, we were talking about was it mars or was it social media Matt? we were talking about social media and and we and as we are want to mm. do we we leapt off of social media and started talking about uh god yeah and a, and a question popped up so yeah here's the what? question so we want to know or we're going to try and work it out. What would happen if God came back? So we were thinking, like, we're, we're sort of on this tangent, and we're thinking, like, what if, what if this, this omnipresent, omnipotent being 
shows up on earth and he's like, yo, I'm, I'm the real deal. I'm God. Mm. Here I am. And then what, what yeah. happened to the world? Can, can he have powers? Does he like, is there a way, does he have an ability that proves, is there empirical evidence? I'm, I'm yeah, going to say yes. Like so he comes proof. down, he comes down and he's like, I'm God. Someone goes, no, you're not. And he rises up, goes proper Old Testament, and just bursts this dude. Like, zap, Ooh. bang, or something like that. Or he can walk on water, and everyone's pretty sure this guy's God. Or girl, you know. I mean, he's a God, probably not got a gender, because, you know, God. Um, you, don't wanna, you don't want to. You don't want to misgender God. You don't want to misgender now. God. That's that's the first. He's gonna thing. get pissed. <laughs> or she's gonna get pissed. Yeah. They are going to get. I don't even know anymore. Yeah. So so definitely this this is God, and and everyone's there going, oh fuck, that's God. They've done something, and it's God. And then we want to see what the fallout of that is in the world. So we're going to try mm. and ponder through this for the next hour or two. And see if we can work it out. Okay. So, I mean, what, what were we thinking last time, Matt? Let's, let's cast our, our, our minds back to a couple of weeks ago. It's, well, it, first is panic, it, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ideological okay. panic. Mm. Well, we sort of said it depended on which god it was. Mm. Or if it was all the gods as one god. Because if it was someone specific, God, mm. that's going to cause quite the stir. I would say it would. Yeah, well, it? like if it's Aries, <laughs> Aries, <laughs> <laughs> or, or if just it was some... Cthulhu or something like. That. <laughs> God, on, if it was Cthulhu, that would be a, that'd be a bad draw, wouldn't it? What a day at the beach that would be. <laughs> I don't think. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> now go on. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I would just imagine if something like that happened, it, it wouldn't even be a theoretical discussion, right? You'd just like, you'd have to call the Ghostbusters or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they turn up, they go, nope, not an pay grade, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then Cthulhu would say, are you a god? And they'd yeah. be like, uh, yes. <laughs> and then, then, you know, something would explode. And then we would just kind of like forget about it until the next Cthulhu came around. <laughs> Oh, well, so it would all blow over. <laughs> yeah. I, I imagine it would. You know, I, I, I think, like, like, look, if you have, like, let, let, let's move away, right? Let, let, let's not say something like, like, let's say it's, like, I, what I imagine the, the hypothetical really is. Like, it's an actually a person, and he's, you know, transgender, so he can use any bathroom he wants. And, <laughs> you know, he's, this, this, this is like, yeah, I, I made the universe. I think you would have, you know, huge religious sects that would absolutely deny him, mm. right? I mean, it, regardless mm. of whatever, you know, type of skill he might possess, I think that they would just be like, like, that's, you know what? It'd be like Trump. It's like, that's not my, that's not my God. You mm. know, that's some other God. Hashtag mm. God, my God. I don't allow a God like that to exist. Mm. <laughs> Hashtag not my God, oh God. <laughs> Really yeah. What it would be. Yeah. That, yeah. Well, yeah. It, it would be. Um, it would probably be denounced by everyone. Right? Yeah. Like, I mean, like every probably, major religious sect. Right. I mean, you'd probably have a new collection of people, right? People who, you know, were completely, completely Gnostic, ironically, who mm. now start mm. believing in stuff. Hmm. Mm. Right. But I mean, anyone who has already decided what they want to believe. You know, you can't con convince people of anything. They need to want to believe it themselves. So I, I can't imagine telling anybody, you, you know, because uh, what will happen? You'll get like the backfire effect. You know, people will be like, oh, no, I mean, yeah, yeah, great that you're proving me wrong. But now, you know, they'll change their views. They'll change their values. They'll do whatever they can, uh, you know, to, to keep their own version of, of uh, you know, a, a godliness alive. So that they have you know, value and purpose in their own life. I think you're right about that. Because you see that with, even now, you see that with pretty much every religious text out there. In fact, any text at all. Like, people read into it exactly what they want to read into it and ignore what's there. Yeah, they cherry pick. Mm. Mm. 
I mean, I was mm. talking to someone about um, Nietzsche last night. And um, I can't remember how we got onto it. I think that's just how my mind works. We just ended up talking about philosophy and bar. And, um, and obviously his, I think it was his sister or something like that. Arthur Nietzsche died. She sort of went, this is what this means. And was like a huge anti-Semite. And then Hitler was like, I dig this. I dig this re- um, misinterpretation of Nietzsche's work. I'm going to use this and, uh, and fuck shit up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, people will always use whatever is in their benefit, you know, for their own personal gain. Mm. Um, you know, like even like you know, the <laughs> you can look back like at L. Ron Hubbard and when he started, uh, uh, what was the fuck the Scientology? Mm. I mean, mm. it's been proven they were literally they were looking for a tax shelter. Mm. That's all it was. Mm. You know, they weren't trying to create a religion. They they were just like, let's just fucking let's make some money off of some morons. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And and if you can attach anything to that, if you mm. can sell velvet on whatever, I mean, what would really have to? I think. How do I phrase this? What would really have to happen is this godlike creature. They would have to like kind of. They'd have to be like a threat. You know, they they would have to you know really like you know, bring down health healthcare and and ah. you know kind of change the system and and you know it's kind of like like a, a Batman movie, a Batman versus Superman, where they they want to have like those trials that like is Superman should he be allowed to exist? Mm. You know, mm. and it's like well maybe you know those there, are some interesting conversations. Unfortunately, the movie never really gets into that because the whole fucking capital blows up. But, yeah. <laughs> but if it didn't, it actually could have been kind of a deep moment in the movie. And you've mm. been like, yeah, it's a good philosophical conversation. Like when someone has this kind of power, you know, mm. huh. what is the responsibility to, you know, the people, the inhabitants of the planet? Mm. Mm. So it would, have to, it would have to be Cthulhu. And if it wasn't, we'd have to make it Cthulhu somehow. Uh, maybe, yeah. Ah. Yeah, because then you get into cool. like issues of power. Don't you? If you've got an om- if you've got an omnipresent being, and they come down and like, yo, I made the universe, I, I made you all in my image, that's why I kind of look like all of you. Um, I wield absolute power. Everyone in power is gonna have a bit of a uh, an issue with that, aren't they? Yeah. You know, well, then they would get a- smitten or smote, smoted, <laughs> smited. <laughs> What's the what's the past tense of smite? I have no idea. I think it might be smote. Smote. They, they may get smote. smitten. They may get smitten. They may get in love with him or her. But um, yeah, they they're not going to be they're not going to be best pleased, are they? It's going to be sort of resist or die, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would think and, so. And then they're going to try and be like, hey, I've got all this fucking power over my, you know, my, I've got a tyrannical regime here. I've been doing this for decades. I'm fucking doing really well. Now this fucking god upstart is trying to <laughs> trying to take a piece of my pie <laughs> so yeah I, do you reckon people are going to try and kill god when that happens be like no not my god hashtag not my god you're out of my way i want to keep my despotic regime i mean i would imagine unless it is something like a cthulhu like it, it has to be something that you can't reason with you can't talk it to mm. right because mm. if you can have a conversation with it you know that changes that changes the the conversation, I guess, right? Yeah, it, it yeah. changes the question. You know, I'm not sure, man. I feel I feel like if you even if you could have a conversation with with this god thing, whoever it's not talking to would want to whack it, probably, because of because of the power dynamics involved. People would be trying to cut deals with it, definitely. Yeah, I could see that. Hmm. You'd have to hope that this, like, it would have to be, you know, Martin Luther King on his best day, right? I mean, there couldn't be, like, like a shred of of, uh, egoism. He couldn't, you know, come off like he was trying to to, to go over on anybody. He would actually hit. The problem is, is that a true guy being wouldn't waste his fucking time with us. No. (laughs) You know? No, probably not. Like, imagine if you had the power, like, you know, 
shrink down to an ant and then tell all the ants you're the king of ants. Would you do that? I wouldn't. I wouldn't waste my time. <laughs> but the big, qu- the big question is, what would we do if we were ants? <laughs> I was king of the ants. What would I do? <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. Well, hey, uh, hang on. So let's establish. Uh, so we, uh, me as king of the ants, I am ant-sized. You, you have shrunk like yourself ant, down the to the king of the ants. Okay, the ants aren't all human-sized. <laughs> no. Okay. It's not planet mm. of the ants. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's honey, I shrunk Matt into the king of the ants. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, well, this, do you have like... war in existence. Do, do you remember Matt? Is it like Kafka? Like, do you, is it like Metamorphosis? Like, <laughs> do you know who you are? Or are you just like, you know, you're an ant and you have no real recollection of being anything else? I think, oh, God, that's I think a point. We've got, I think we've got a special um, metamorphosis, Ray. Uh, <laughs> where, where Matt yeah. just gets to be shrunk down to be king of the ants. And, but he gets to be able to speak as ants. He gets to speak ant, antlish. And um, okay. actually, I'm thinking about it. You're just going to get fucked up by the ants. Because you, know, you look at us, we're just like fleshy like meat sacks and they've got like they're strong motherfuckers aren't they they are they're strong and they've got pincers and they can like lift like 20 times their body weight you ain't lasting too long as king of the ants i think (laughs) until some young upstart ant decides to take my crown just just or just decides to take your head off well yeah well the crown would would go with the head yeah (laughs) put my head on its head with the crown on its head <laughs> That's pretty morbid. <laughs> <laughs> he just walks around the country with a head on his head. Yeah. <laughs> the power dynamics of Ant World. He who wears the crown controls the universe. And then Matt can come back to human form. Yeah. And and that tradition with him. Mm. And then you know the humans, whoever decides that they're king of the humans, can wear. <laughs> the head of the previous king on their head. <laughs> like, their news conferences and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, election, the, election years would be a lot more intense, even than they are now. Like a mini <laughs> purge, a mini Hunger Games of just presidential <laughs> candidates. Yeah, oh. if, uh, if, if Joe Biden cut off Trump's head and then wore him on his head, I would he'd probably win, I think. I think that would be the, the, uh, the clincher right there. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the the democratic the dem uh, the democrat primaries would just be the winner would just have like 20 heads on top of their head 20 skin <laughs> just 20 skin masks <laughs> jesus oh be like balancing plates <laughs> that would really be the true test right if you could how many how many heads can you balance on your head <laughs> yeah, and the more, the more, and if they don't drop, then you're a true leader. That's the you test. Have, you've got a good head for leadership. <laughs> and that's where that phrase came from. <laughs> <laughs> daddy, daddy, where does this phrase come from? Oh, we used to kill our presidential candidates. <laughs> So basically, <laughs> what we're saying at the moment is, every, if this, if a, a shift, a huge shift in power happens, violence is very close behind. Uh, inevitably, yeah. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. but I mean, I, I think it gets like your question is, like, <coughs> at the deep root of it, mm. it's really about fear, right? I mean, mm. people are fearful. People are they're they're driven by fear. Every decision that the majority of humans make on a day-to-day basis is fear-based. It's for mm. self-preservation, mm. Mm. survival. Mm. You know, you know, uh, you're going to, um, you know, there's, there's a person at work and, and they uh, they're up for a promotion, and you know, if you tell your boss, hey, they did this thing, and they won't get the promotion, and there's a better chance of you getting it. Mm. Yeah, it might not be good for the company, but it's good for you. 
Mm. Right? I mean, more people would select that, that option mm. than saying, hey, I'm going to take one for the team and I'm going to help this other person get the job because it's going to be for the whole. Nobody mm. does that. Nobody mm. does that. Mm. Unfortunately, yes. It is unfortunate. And I think mm. as a, a species, as a population, for the majority <laughs> of time, as, as long as people still do that, you know, mm. uh, God would be murdered if he came down with Mm. Yeah. Uh, mm. People are primitive. You know, well, I mean, to... I think I think people would try and murder God. I don't well... think God would. I feel like, yeah, I feel like it's it's almost immaterial. If God came down and appeared, that we'd be on like a ticking clock countdown to someone trying to kill God, and then God just going, "Ah, fuck this!" And just. <laughs> I remember yeah. what I left in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> fucking idiots say, trying to kill me <laughs> let's say for argument's sake that you know, he had to show a, a power the sort of wrath of god to get people in line mm. people mm. would be in line because they would fear him mm. you yeah. know mm. i mean it, that's like and, and again that again that goes back to the whole idea of like fear for fear for survival mm. Well, what if what if like the power that was demonstrated was like fixing the climate or something like that? If God just went uh, like snapped his fingers and the air suddenly the air in China suddenly became breathable, I think he would have to do something that that fortunately every single person would be able to benefit from mm, instantly. Yeah, because let's say it is a Chinese thing, right? Or, or he, you know, he, he, no more tourists in the Dominican Republic die any, anymore. Well, that's very <laughs> isolated. So <laughs> it's like, well, maybe that happened. I don't know. It doesn't yeah. affect my life. And then, and then you, well, when, I'm, when am I going to get mine? Mm. So I think you get very devoted followers in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> he, would, he would get a free vacation time he wants. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, I have a nice uh, holiday. That's the only reason he came down, yeah. to get a holiday home. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I mean, if that's the, the case, then I, I would think that he would need to, he would need to do something for everybody, right? He, every, everybody have to feel like, oh man, this guy really has his shit together. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and maybe, maybe a thing that he can't do all at once, right? Maybe it's like an Elon Musk type thing. Like he's got to take on little projects here and there all over the world. And, uh, maybe Elon Musk is God. <gasps> <laughs> Very slowly. I think he thinks he is, at least. I've, I've got a theory about Elon Musk. Um, I think he's a supervillain. Ah. I'm sure he's a supervillain. He's wanting to get to Mars and build a, in quotes, colony. Read, uh -huh. space laser. He's building an underground network of tunnels in LA, i.e. an underground base. He's making uh -huh. autonomous cars, as in autonomous robots i think he's just getting all of his cards in order and then going <laughs> like if you if you aren't driving a tesla you're the enemy and <laughs> it's going to come round so i'm i'm trying to uh, I'm trying to get some some stocks in one of his companies to, sh to show fealty before he sets up the space laser that's my that's my thing on it i'm pretty well, sure let me let me ask, let me ask you this what what involves uh you know, being autonomous, having tons and tons of drones, uh, underground tunnels, and a colony. Ants. Oh my God. He's the king of the ants! He's king of the ants! Oh my God. <laughs> so He's think about that. heads on top of his head. <laughs> He's going to wear everyone's head! <laughs> <laughs> He's going <wear. laughs> to have seven billion heads on top of his head. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, it makes perfect sense, really. So, it does. So. <laughs> Irrefutable proof. You've heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Elon Musk is king of the ants. He's come back. He survived. He survived getting his head chopped off. And he's come back. <laughs> God, you, you, next, next, um, next time Alex Jones speaks, he'll be saying this exact thing. Yeah. And people will laugh. Yeah. But it'll he's be one of those times when he's right. <laughs> <coughs>
So basically what we're saying is God needs, right, God comes down. Chances are the only way everyone's going to fall in line is if he goes proper Old Testament and like mm. wrecks some stuff up. Doing it through like love instead, sort of a, a, a beneficial action, that's going to be a lot more hard to get everyone in line with it. Mm. Yeah. Right. So. Okay. So light side and dark side. Hmm. The quick and easy path of, of smiting, mm-hmm. of getting people smitten, yeah. or, <laughs> or, or the longer, more difficult path of making everyone happy. Well, let me ask you this. Yeah. So this, this God, right? Hmm. He, uh, he can create stuff, stuff something, right? No. Can he, can he use magic? Like, let's say his miracle, his first miracle is everyone, whatever their favorite meal is, poof, it just pops up in front of them. Okay. Now, everybody would be able to understand and benefit from this and realize yeah. it as a miracle. Mm-hmm. Or does he have to play by the rules of, you know, our physics, right? And, like, everyone maybe gets, like, a drone <laughs> that appears with their food. Hmm. And then, because if that's the case, then people would probably still be like, well, maybe, well, maybe it's just a really rich, rich like, psycho. Hmm. <laughs> people would think it was Amazon. Yeah. Or... Elon Musk, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. So, so if God creates the universe, He's written the rules. Right. So I guess. I mean, one of two things could happen. He could break the rules if He wanted to, but that I don't think that's going to be as believable, is it? Like, just mm. like, just like well, you're I mean, writing a he... book, for example, you can break your own rules in that book. You can. F- make whatever rules you want in that book. But as soon as you're breaking, people are like, nah, I don't like this. So our, our, belief, our belief is going to be wavering. So I, I guess, yeah, we're going to, have to, we're going to have to stick with the uh, known laws of physics on this one. Okay, so he can only, but if he, okay, so he can only create miracles by the rule set that he himself has set in motion. I think so. Hmm. Hmm. But then does that mean... Okay, so is does that he really mean he a... has? Does that mean he has to cook everyone's favorite meal? <laughs> um, <That> means... <laughs> <laughs> you got four million lob dinners going out. <laughs> <laughs> For my first miracle, I'm going to make all of your favorite food. Give me about six hundred years, <laughs> get and you'll lobby. get it eventually. <laughs> But then I guess there's, there's still a lot that we don't know about physics and how shit works. Is it? You know, like that we haven't got like a grand unified theory yet suggests that we don't bloody know everything yet. Well, so, I know? mean, we know as much as we do about, about the earthworks, right? And the mm. physics on, on that, you know, uh, understanding of it. But like, mm. yeah, like antimatter ant- is just sort of an assumption of things. Mm. However, that doesn't... It, it's just, it's just like, you know, it, it's a filler. <laughs> it's a, it's mm. a mad lib. <laughs> it's yeah. like, we don't really know. What it is. So we'll fill it in and hope that it makes sense later on. Mm. But I don't know how much that is currently on this planet right now that we don't quite understand. I think we, we have a, a pretty good grasp of it. Mm. So hmm. could this be? Hmm. You know, now let's say, for example, there was uh, like AI, right? Mm-hmm. I think AI might be the closest thing to a God-like presence in our lifetime mm-hmm. that we'll mm. see. And maybe it will fi- find a way very easily to say like, here's your lobster dinner, poof, and we just use the uh, molecules from your, you know, you know, yeah. share. <laughs> we rearrange them and here you go. Yeah. Um, that would probably, that could work. You know, we don't know how to do that, but we know that it's possible to do that. We just can't rearrange molecules or anything like that. Yeah. Right, so we need, so as soon as they, that, that's where we could go with love then. It's, it's molecule, we're, we're basically making the, um, what was it called, like the replicator in Star Trek. I don't know Star Trek. Is it the replicator, Matt? You're more of a Trekkie than I am. Yes, yeah, the replicator. Yeah. So I basically, I think that's what it does. So, right, we, we need a replicator for God or Old Testament. 
and then is that going to make people fall in line though you know favorite meal i reckon there's still I, yeah imagine it that easy <laughs> well i've had my lobster dinner i believe in god now see ya <laughs> my life is so much better now. i mean i i, I really like curry i mean <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. What if, right? So let's let's go back to the other way where he can sort of break his own rules, or not necessarily break his own rules, but there's probably some far-fetched scientific way to do it. So we can grant everyone a wish, right? He grant. He's like he's like Santa, right? What wish would you have? What wish would would make you believe this dude's god? I think he would have to do something that was like, he would need to fix something incurable. Right. Mm. You know, like, and, and not like can cancer. I feel like, believe it or not, like we're probably going to hit a cure for that in the next decade, maybe less. Mm. But I think it needs to be something like Down syndrome. Mm. Mm. Something that you're born with that is, you know, part of your, your, you know, your chromosomes, like something that is not, you know, is, is not just a, I mean, I guess it's a genetic defect, essentially. Mm. Mm. Or like conjoined twins or something like that. You yeah. Like, two, so now you're two people. Yeah. Or two separate people. Right. Hmm. That's, that's what I would imagine. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, something huh. that we, we're not even close to figuring it out at this point. I mean, we don't have a cure for the common cold, do we? What's well, because the common cold isn't common. It mutates in every ah. season. Different version. <laughs> the the uber cold. <laughs> what would what would your wish be, Matt? Oh boy. Um, hmm. I reckon oh. I reckon Matt wants space travel. M Matt does Ooh. want space travel. I want that quite a bit. Urgh. Yeah, it'd I think it'd be space travel. It'd be tough to come up with something that wouldn't be 100% self-serving. Mm. Yeah. You know, like, I, I would like to fly. I'd like to be invisible. But if I was invisible, I would do really terrible things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you know, I can't think of any good reason to be invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if it's something you could like switch on and switch off. Right. Like you're not permanently invisible, I guess. Like a, that, like or, a, or that's a, like a burner's watch of invisibility. Ex exactly. exactly. That probably doesn't translate well to you, Will. Was there Bernard's <laughs> watch in the States? What's that? Was there Bernard's watch in the States? It was a TV show. Oh, I don't know that. No, basically this kid had a special watch and... Um, he could just stop time and every kid wanted Bernard's watch because it seemed fucking brilliant. You know what's funny though? That's always been like a low key fantasy of mine. Yeah, yeah. Stop time. Mm. Like, you could do anything with that, right? Yeah. I mean, you could, you could cheat on a test, you could rob a bank, you know. Mm. You I think a... in, in Bernard's watch, however, I think there was like this old dude who would like, te like make him not do bad things. He'd be like, if you cheat on the test, a bad thing's going to happen. And then he'd do it, and then the, the man would do something. I seem to remember that. I seem to remember this being this, this wise man in there. Oh. Yeah. I think so, anyway. Did you ever watch it, Matt? I did, yeah. I mean, even if you could, even if you had the power to, like, slow down time, mm. you could, I mean, you could, you could, if you had the ability to, like, have time go at half speed, let's say. Mm. You could become like a, a, an athlete immediately, mm -hmm. right? Because you'd be able to, because everyone else is like, if you could move, let's say you can move at the same speed as normal, mm -hmm. but everyone else is moving at half speed. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be, uh, you'd get the world record in everything forever. No, can, can you turn it off? Oh, yeah, like, you, you, yeah. You turn it on, turn it off. Because that okay. would be really annoying, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in every other, in every other situation so except for... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, your cover would be blown immediately yeah. if that was the case. Every movie would be four hours long. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> You're like, oh my God, I don't want to watch this anymore. God, Lord of the Rings suddenly becomes... <laughs> the, the ideal torture, yeah. <laughs> 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 what would you pick? What would you pick as your superhero, uh, your superpower? Oh, what, I, what I first wanted when I was a kid, right? I wanted to like know everything. And being naive, I thought that'd be really, really cool. Oh yeah, I'd be able to know all these cool things. And I thought, oh, I'd know all the bad things as well. Like when I'm going to die. And I was like, ah, but then I could think about how not to die. And, I can, and yeah, that was my first one of wanting to know everything. Mm. Ooh. But it actually sounds like a terrible one because you learn loads of bad stuff. Like, I feel like it, that would drive you insane immediately. I think so, yeah. <laughs> ah. Yeah, that, that's like that power, like, like Jean Grey can read people's minds. Yeah. You know, everyone thinks the same thing. They just look at you and they're just like, oh God, he looks like shit, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like you this know, person. I don't like this person. Yeah. Or the complete opposite. Op- op- I just, I just wanna, I just wanna pound them. That's all I wanna do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't wanna know your name. Your name is wanna tear your clothes off. I mean, that's it's like very basic <laughs> primal. <shit>. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I feel like the stop in time one would be nice. Bernard's watch. That would be my power. But it comes with an old man. Who wants you to be ethically good, though, Matt? Well, I, without to... the old, without the old man, I don't want to be. Yeah. Epi- I, so here's the thing: I know myself, yeah, and I know that if I had any kind of power like that, I'd become a monster immediately. <laughs> 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 like, if I, this is why, like, I have, I don't really have any aspirations for for power. Hmm. Because I know that I, would, I know I would be a terrible leader. I would abuse that so bad. Hmm. I have too many. I have too many neuroses and too many like, like um, too many things annoy me. <laughs> like if like if I became a political leader of some kind, I have no doubt there would be like labour camps, but not yeah. for people of any kind of like different nationality. Just Nothing like that. Like stupid. It would people. be like people who. People who eat too loudly, I'd be like, get in a fucking camp <laughs> now. People who people who cough slightly too often on the train, get in the camp. <laughs> We're gonna give you some vapo rub. You can stay in the camp and do your work. I mean, yeah. if you could freeze time, just you know, during one of your session sessions. Just take the old man and just, you know, throw him in a dumpster or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Problem solved and then, you know, resume and yeah. uh, there's, there's, there's no clash. <laughs> Drop him on an island somewhere. <laughs> or, or off a cliff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See you later, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the yeah. watch, asshole. <laughs> Stupid yeah. moron, giving me this watch. You're an idiot. Bye. <laughs> yeah. S- step one. Yeah, that's the first thing that happens when you get this amazing power. Step one, <laughs> murder the old man. <laughs> remove all, yeah, remove just all ethical just quandaries about <laughs> using this power. <laughs> so we, I'm, I'm seeing a theme here, guys, that human beings are terrible. <laughs> 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 Whether it's God or stopping time, we have a way of being shits. Well, hypo- hypothetical shits. Yeah. You know, so the thing yeah, is, yeah, yeah. really had the power. So it's kind of hard to. I mean, you know, you, you laugh and you joke, but mm. if someone really could do it, I mean, who knows? Maybe they would mm. actually feel like a burden on them to do good with it. Mm. Mm. I feel like it'd be too te- it would almost be too tempting. Well, that would be, that would, would make for, I mean, it's the kind of thing that makes for an interesting story because you've got like the, the conflict. Mm. I've got yeah. all this power. I should do good things, but the temptation's there to drop the old man off the cliff. Like it's, it's there, <laughs> you know. Do you reckon you get bored of doing bad things like dropping the old man off a cliff? I mean, cause like you could, you could be a shit and do, you know, like 
you know, I don't know, rob banks and cheat on tests and things like that. Yeah, yeah. But then you're sort of, you're, you're with this watch, you've dropped the old man off the cliff, and you're thinking, fuck, am I, this, this is all a bit samey now. Because I think we, we have an amazing capacity to get bored. Yeah. I mean, I would, <laughs> you know? Right? Because I think that you would probably be a little shit for like, let, let's be optimistic, right? Not even, let's, let's be pessimistic. You know, for a, like a couple of years. Even. Yeah. You know, after a while, you just were like, all right, now it's like you get it out of your system. Yeah. You don't mm. want to be juvenile with your power anymore. Mm. I think it'd be like, it's kind of a weird analogy. Mm. But like in the, the 70s and 80s, you know, there was like cable TV. Mm. And people would stay home all day. They lost their jobs because they had never had the ability to watch so much TV at one time. Mm. And then now, you know, I can watch whatever I want, literally whatever I want. And I usually watch nothing. nothing. Mm. Yeah. So it's like, as the, you are given more uh, sort of power, as you're given more, you know, just like freedom. Yeah. Freedom. Yeah. It's like, yeah. okay, well, that's a little, little, I don't, I don't care about doing that anymore. Mm. It's not such a novel idea because I can do it. It doesn't mean I want to do it or I should do it. Mm. Mm. Maybe maybe that's it, what maybe that's what the god could do then. So use it. We're going back to like using sort of physics. He just makes like a matrix, right? He makes a matrix, and he goes right. I'm going to give you your favorite superpower. Get your favorite superpower. Let you do what you want. You guys, you guys don't want me around. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you, you. You can be god. You get to pick one of my powers, and I'm gonna I'm gonna piss off. But actually, what he does, he just puts them in a simulation which we may already be in, Matt. We may be the Sims. We may be the Sims, <laughs> but he lets us go in. The and then sort of, we get bored with it. And then we sort of go, oh, we should probably do some fucking good with this. Just for, just for anything, just to stop, you know, just for a bit of a change, really. You know? And then maybe that's what he does to get everyone on his side. Maybe. So hang on, is he doing that with everybody? Yeah. Is he giving everybody superpowers? He just gives everyone Oculus Rift. Like a really good one. He gives a, like a really good one, full haptic feedback, all of that. And you, you go into the game, you go into Live 2.0, but you don't know it's Live 2.0, and you get, you get superpower. So everyone has a superpower. Yeah. Everyone on Earth has a superpower. Yep. That's pandemonium immediately. Oh, no, oh, but they're, they're, they're in their simulation, though. They're in their simulation, so it's not the real oh, so world. so it's not real pandemonium. Yeah. Uh, okay. Wait, is the simulation connected? Um, a... let's, yeah, let's go MMORPG. Let's, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Destiny, right? I mean, it's just a bunch of fucking people jumping around and <laughs> shooting each other. Mm. Yeah. How many people would, loads of people would want to fly mm. <laughs> where the sky would just be full of people. Mm. We'd never see the sun <laughs> blocked out by a bunch of... <laughs> yeah. Bunch of human dots. Do you reckon that would work, though? Yeah. Do you reckon that would work to get everyone on side? Uh, uh, maybe. Hmm. Sure. Hmm. I mean, if he, if it, I feel like if he did it, it oh, Matt. right. So, if he gave everyone powers for like ten minutes. I guess we could say 10 minutes, but even if we go yeah. for the conservative estimate that Will gave, like you get, you get like two years in life 2.0. No, I mean like in real life, if people got the powers oh, okay. for like 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. But then I thought there's a lot of damage everyone on earth could do with superpowers. For I reckon, minutes. yeah, I reckon there's a lot of chaos in 10 minutes that can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, they've people... never had power before, so they wouldn't know how to use it. Mm. Yeah. People would start flying and then it would, they wouldn't stop. It would cut off after 10 minutes and people oh, would just fall to their death. <laughs> you've, got, you've got all the flying people falling out of the sky. You've got people that can like go through matter like ghosts just falling into, like, into the earth and they're stuck there. 
People getting got, stuck in walls, yeah. Got, yeah, you've got invisible people just st- stuck in like banks with p- piles of money. <laughs> <laughs> Superhuman people picking up boulders and shit, getting crushed by the things that they're picking up because they're fucking, they were jacked and now they're not. Over that, <laughs> just that, 10 minutes is end of, end of, end of days. We're done. Yeah. And, that's, and that was the plan all along. It's like yeah. a mass cull. Yeah. And the people who haven't used their powers and haven't like abused their powers or whatever, they're the ones that survive. <gasps> it's the rapture. And, and, and the meat Ugh. shall inherit the earth. Yeah. That's how it'll happen. I miss, I, I've not read the Bible. I don't know if that's um, like chapter 19. <laughs> the, 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 book, the, book of, the book of Endgame. <laughs> That's a, that's a yeah. really good way to wipe out humanity, isn't it, I think? You give everyone well, wipe out a bunch of humanity, yeah. Yeah. You know, there was, a, there was a Black Mirror episode about that. Sort of. There's, like, uh, I can't remember how it goes, but, like, you know, there's a website, and mm. you can vote to see if this dipshit will get killed. Mm. And then if you vote on it, then they'll kill the, the asshole off. Yeah. But by voting... You are unknowingly you get entering your at the end, yeah. To to this list, list of all these bees that are going to kill you later. Mm. Ooh. You know, and essentially the idea is, hey, you know what? Now I know who you are, mm. and you're a bad person, and yeah. you're just as bad as the other person. Now you're gone. Ooh. Yeah. Because you you partaken or partook, I guess. Uh, <laughs> you know, in this genocide mm. and now you're going to get your comeuppance mm. ah so what the only survivors are the people who like never watched it or watched it but never voted so it was basically uh, a twitter thing wasn't it it was, a, it was a twitter hashtag and it was like kill something um oh. and yeah like they were doing it for like politicians and things like that and then at a certain yeah, point well, just on air personalities like yeah. one guy was cheating Wife, or some rapper, or something. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, yeah, it was something. Like that. And um, then everyone who did the hashtag, they got targeted and um, and killed. Yeah, at the end of it, hmm. that was a harrowing episode. I mean, they all are. That was one of the best <laughs> ones they've had. <laughs> yeah, I want to watch that one now. That really, one sounds really like if I want to be if I want to be like scared. <laughs> if you want to be terrified <laughs> about what what world you know what could possibly happen in the world, then yeah, go straight ahead for it, Matt. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a joy. So I um, I, have, I guess no, no. Yeah, in vain with all of this hypothetical, mm. and I will ask you. Mm. So let's say, for argument's sake, this God, mm-hmm. he um, he says, "Look, here's what I, I'm going to do." Every person on this planet, you will get one lottery day. Mm-hmm. One day where everything you think you try to do in your life will happen the way you want it to happen. Mm-hmm. Whether it's a girl you're hitting on, a job you're seeking, a mortgage or you know, a bank loan, whatever it is, mm-hmm. it's going to happen for you. Yep. But I'm not going to tell you what day it is. Oh. Uh, now, does this make people try to live their best life? Because one of those days they're gonna they're gonna get thing, but they don't know what it is. Mm. Mm. I'm trying and to think, think if that would work for me. Because it would hopefully yeah. put people in a position where they're not right. Because if it, it fear mm. is what keeps you back mm. and from trying, mm-hmm. but mm. you know, one of these days, if I literally just do the same thing over and over and over, I mean, you'll probably get a lot of restraining training work on a lot of guys. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to assume at some point, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really like that because it. I think, you know, I, ideally, if you if you sort of think about your grand, your perfect day, because we, we we did this in Japan, didn't we, Matt? We were sort of going like, what would your mm. perfect day be if you could just sort of do it over and over and over again, and. Um, if, I think if you really want that, you'd expect that you'd live up, live, sort of go for it. But then there's, there's a part inside of me that thinks a lot of people are going to waste their, their lottery day. Because... Knowingly or unknowingly? I think... 
Mm. Well, no people will just home. like sit down and not do anything expecting that because they know it's going to happen. So they'll stop working hard for it. Not necessarily because like, so we, we have this, so we go, right. God says, you're going to have this lottery day. One day before you die, everything's going to happen the way you want it to. So this means you could, you know, be a billionaire. You could start your own business. You could find the love of your life. But you're actually going to have to be in a situation where that happens. You know, that day is going to be perfect, but it's depending on what you're doing that day. Now we can all, we can all improve in our lives, but, but, you know, sometimes there's, you know, hard times where, you know, we get thrown a curveball, but I'd like to hope that hard work pays off in, you know, some shape or form in sort of whatever you do, but we kind of want things a bit too quickly sometimes. And I mean, effort, you know, it's, it, it goes back to sort of getting bored again we get a bit bored and mm. just be like uh, can, I, can I be bothered to potentially meet the love of my life today it's been 390 days I've still had, I'm still with my shitty boss I'm still working 9 to 5 at you know the tax office and nothing's fucking happened yet maybe I'll just have a, just a day where I just, I just sit down in my pants and eat crisps <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of people are going to miss it I think a lot of people are going to miss it because I think for me anyway <coughs> I know I'm lazy I'm a lazy person <laughs> I, can, I can get very very focused on things but I just need that you know that correct sort of flow state to kick in and just be like oh yeah I can work for fucking six hours on what I want to do with my life and, and make real progress but some of the time I'm just like nah, I can't be bothered <laughs> to work on the rest of my life I, th- I think sometimes we're a bit too short-sighted as, as humans. Well, if anything, I am. I don't know about everyone. Mm. Maybe everyone else has got the hustle. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> everyone's different. But I think you'd have a lot of people who would squander the day, mm. you know? They wouldn't realize how powerful it could be. Mm. So, I mean, they're going to, you know, they're going to have lots of sex, sex or a lot of coke, or they're going to do a lot of bunch of useless, idiotic stuff. Mm. And it, there'll be no long-term term you know ramifications or anything it'll just be like sort of a one and done yeah and they'll they'll yeah. look at it as just a great day but there'll be no there'll be no <laughs> reason for it outside of you know just having fun for 24 hours there'll be no long-term they'd have to, gains there'd yeah, have to be no. some yeah there'd have to be some kind of limit on it yeah because people there are people that want um major societal change and that's yeah. like what they're working towards and there's and people want that in different ways. So it would have to be something personal. But I mean, see. God God works in mysterious ways, or so they say, Matt. So I mean, if you if you say like like somebody wants major societal change, say they're like um like a strict anarchist. They're like fuck government. I don't want. I just want to be. I want to be my own person. I want full full control over my life. You could just end up in a situation where this person gets plucked up and put on like a desert island where they can definitely survive and there's no one, there's no one ever going to come and get them. Oh, you know? Okay. I reckon oh, there's so ways they around are it, their own anarchy. you know, or you've got like some, some like white supremacist who wants, you know, rid of all of the people that don't look like him. Just, he, he ends up on a boat and he's like, Oh no. I've been, I've got this, I've got my dream job at working at the South Pole for some reason. Now he's just on the North Pole, just clicking a button every 30 <laughs> minutes to send pictures back to, you know, NORAD or whatever. Where, you know? where everyone and everything is white. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, oh. and sounds you like get a, like maybe. Sounds like a Twilight Zone episode, doesn't it? Like, it's like, be careful what you <laughs> wish for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Well, you get like maybe someone who's like a hardcore communist mm. who would end up maybe. Just living in a commune. Yeah. Or in a cult. And having it, <laughs> or in a cult. <laughs> or like who have their own like they have their own sort of communist system, but it's between mm. like a dozen people. Yeah. Okay. There I think go. I think that could happen. And I mean it could happen, but you don't even need a God for that to happen. I think we just need to think more laterally than we do sometimes, you know. Mm. We think a lot, you know, a lot of people think about being rich. It's not that we want to be rich. 
money's money. Money can help you do things, but that's what you're actually after. You want to be able to do things and have freedom, isn't it? Well, mm. it's the opportunity. People want opportunity. People yeah. don't want to be in a position where they are, you know, subject to some asshole telling them mm. what to do. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and, and money's the way out of that. It doesn't mean, mm. doesn't mean, I mean, well, nobody wants to lie in dirty paper. <laughs> of course. Mean <laughs> and I'm not saying, you know, it's easy to find that freedom. I think I'm just sort of saying that there's different ways of going about it. I haven't, you know, I haven't found fucking freedom yet. I'm just still trying to laterally think my way out of a nine to five. But I think mm-hmm. that's how, that's how an, an all seeing, all knowing being, I reckon they could do it. I reckon they've got, they've got the capacity to think laterally. Mm. I think that's a good way. I like that. I like the lottery idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's already in effect. We don't, we don't know. Mm. You know, but I it think that you have to kind of, you have to be realistic to the fact that like, let's say I want to be the president. Mm. Well, on my last day, if I decide that I'm gonna, <laughs> just like, I'm the president now, uh, I think you have to have like set your, your tra- trajectory in motion, right? Mm. Yeah. You'd like, have to you be can't... running in an election. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, you're not gonna just like just poof, like you get the call, like, hey, oh, good. <laughs> <They're here." laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you have to be like setting things in motion to get what you want. Mm, but yeah. when that happens, you know, it's a guarantee. You mm. just don't imagine, know when it's. Imagine getting that call. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like King Ralph. You ever, you ever see that movie? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, okay. Um, kind of a it's like one. <laughs> you're li- you're literally the only person who can lead the country. <laughs> like, I haven't put trousers on yet. What are you talking about? Well, there's that show out there with uh, Kiefer Sutherland, like uh, Designated Survivor. It's kind of the same thing, right? Yeah. Oh, what does everyone like get killed off, and he's like fifty <laughs> second in line for like? It's, it's yeah, it's so dumb, dumb. Yeah. He's, yeah, the the whole capital explodes. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, oh. <laughs> and he's like you know watching some football game and they're like oh, is this not jack bauer yeah you're president now okay <laughs> oh god oh i really like that message though what, what if it already is in motion we'd never know but what a good way to live your life i think so right that's I mean, a, cause, that's a wicked moral i love that yeah, yeah. Always, always try. I have mm. never not asked out a girl I liked or not applied for a job I wanted. Mm. And yeah, sometimes it doesn't always happen, but you know, shit, sometimes you end up in a position where you're like, I can't actually believe that I am where I am right now. And it's mm. just because I tried. Hmm. Hmm. Again, Ooh. that's uncharacteristically. Uh... It's all, it's all gone a bit <laughs> fucking wrong on this show, isn't it, Matt? Normally by now we're talking about the end of civilization, and now we're talking about that everyone could have a perfect life. Jesus Christ, Will, what are you doing to us? <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, if you want more, you need to subscribe at camelmoon.com. Only four ninety nine a month. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, though. And so, I, and so our cult begins. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to start somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I really uh, like that. It's a, you know, it's a, it tries to be a positive message. It's something I've thought of. I've actually never, I think, expressed it to anyone. But hmm. I was like, yeah, that would be. I'll, I'll bring that up here. Hmm. What do What do you reckon your your lottery day would look like, then, Will? I mean, you know, I for the longest time, time always, you know, yeah. <laughs> You got a pot of coffee. Um, yeah. <laughs> let me let me think how I'm going to phrase this. You know, when I was, when I was young, I was very sick. Hmm. Uh, I had cystic fibrosis. Hmm. Um, I don't know if you know what that is. It's kind of like That's, pneumonia and asthma. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I've had oh god, just so much other hardship. You know. It's, I got a lung transplant and then that failed. They had to give me another lung transplant. And then I've been on dialysis for eight years and I've had to do uh, just a whole bunch of shit. Hmm. Anyway, we're going to edit all that out. But (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I spent a lot of time 
sort of honing different crafts hmm. and I've become a very um, accomplished comic book artist and I've made independent films. I've won film festivals. I have a TV show on paintings. I've had gallery openings. So I've done a lot of stuff. I'm hmm. even currently working on a, a, um, a 3D platform, uh, you know, PS4 type video game. Oh shit. Nice. And, Ooh. So I do a lot and I, at some point, at multiple points in my life, hmm. I've wanted to do certain things. I've always wanted to draw a Batman comic. I've always wanted to host the Tonight Show. I've always wanted to be on SNL. I've always wanted to, wanted to direct a Star Wars or a Batman movie or something like that. Hmm. And although those jobs only go to lottery winners, right? Hmm. People who don't even know they're playing the lottery, but, you know, essentially they do get the call and it's like, hey, guess what? You're fucking directing another Star Wars movie. Mm. Um, <laughs> don't, don't ruin, ruin, please. So, uh, I, I think in my position, I've always been very fortunate, unlike many people, and although I've never reached the stardom that I have sought, and not yet, I've been able to do everything I've wanted to. Hmm. And I don't think you're going to meet a whole lot of people out there who can say, I've had gallery openings, movie premieres, was film festivals, had award-winning podcasts and TV shows and comic book art, like all this stuff. Uh, I think for a lot of people, they want just one thing. Hmm. And although, yeah, maybe, maybe not to the biggest, grandest audience, yeah, I'm not drawing a Batman comic, but I draw my own comic comic, and I get to tell my story. Mm. And mm. sometimes doing what you want to do on a personal level is almost worth more than any type of fame or notoriety that might come with working for someone else, even if it's for a stupendous amount of money and, and type of uh, you know, fame or whatever. Mm. So in answer to your question, um, you know, what would my perfect day look like? I mean, I, I've always felt like all of my projects are kind of, kind of, I got like, you know, six pots on the boiler. Yeah. And it's like, I, I want them all to come out and be five star meals. You know, hmm. I want my show to be as big as it can be. I want my comic to be a success. I want, you know, my paintings to be hanging in a museum someday. Like, like I want all the things I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I know that I'm not going to not get there or, mm. or I'm not mm. going to be able to get there unless I actually do the stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the rest is mm. kind of in the hands of, of uh, luck, I guess. Mm. Mm. Well, being, you, you seem like you're on course for, for at least one of them. I guess it's, I guess it's about making yourself undeniable, isn't it? I am inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> So don't, I hope I don't snap myself out of existence. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I guess that's part of it, right? It's just, you know, and I think, too, you have to be happy a little bit with what you have and stop chasing something that is impossible. I will never, ever, uh, you know, be able to... Uh, be a supermodel <laughs> okay I mean, mm. this is not gonna happen it's like there's certain things you have to be like well you know well, that's I'm, the next dream gonna, yeah I, i'm never gonna have like you know the rogues gallery of bitches that leonardo dicaprio does it's just like okay well you know <laughs> that, that didn't fall off. but you know you know and i might not ever be able to draw a ninja turtle or a batman comic or something but that's okay you know it's like I can still do my thing. And mm. one thing that I have recognized, and you, you see this from God, any, anyone who's ever, you know, reached the pinnacle of success, mm. they're always like, yeah, you know, it's great until it's not. You know, yeah. you look at like Daniel Craig mm. in those Bond movies. Who on earth would not want to be Bond five or six times? Well, Daniel Craig is for one of them, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like, I want to slip my mm. wrist. I can't fucking do this anymore. So it's like, you know, just, just realize a little bit that although, you know, it's, it's great to have a goal. It's great to have a star to reach for, mm. but don't, don't trample over what you have or throw it in the garbage just because it's not the exact 
pristine version of what you imagine success is. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Again, that's incredibly positive. Yeah. Mm. You're turning you're turning this into a into a positive podcast. Well, I don't know how to feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I think there's some real yeah. clarity there. I think that all you're, all you're saying is, you know, is, it makes sense, you know? I mean, yeah, you know, just don't try to get so down on yourself. I think a lot of people, they genuinely want to feel sorry for themselves. Mm. But they actually derive an, an enjoyment out of it. Yeah. Uh, it, it's easy. To sit there and say, I'm never going to be famous. Let me turn this PlayStation on and just drown my sorrows into fucking Call of Duty. Yeah. You know, I, here I'm king of the ants, right? But, you yeah. know, <laughs> at the end of the day, end of the day what, is it, what is it worth? It's, you know, you, you've spent a whole lot of time doing something that a million other people can do better. better mm-hmm. You know? Uh, and have outside of your own personal fulfillment for that, you know, two or three hours... You haven't learned anything. You haven't gained anything. Yeah. You know, you're going to be just as fearful, sad, scared, and pathetic when you die. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, you know, <laughs> grabbing at fucking the air, wondering like, what have I done with my life? <laughs> mm. I mean, you know, I, I try, I, I would, I would just say like, Hey, when you are lying there and it's over, just be like, huh, man, at least I tried. Mm. You know, mm. at least I asked her out. At least, at least I didn't let it go untried, yeah. you know? Like I, I've I've applied with this one comic book company. I'm not even gonna say their name. Hmm. I don't even, don't even know. Times I've never heard back. I know I'm better than half their artists, and that's not me being like an asshole or modest or anything. Like I am act better than half their artists. So yeah. It's like, well, you know what? They don't want me. Yeah. And that's not a yeah. bad thing. In fact, maybe it's a good thing because it's like I don't want to be in a position where now I have to like be subservient to someone who doesn't want me. Want me there. Hmm. We come back, we come back round to freedom, don't we? You know, mm. while you never may be able to, you know, write that that Batman comic, comic, you could carve out your own piece of the pie because there's there's a big piece of the there is a big pie, you know. There's an awful big pie called Earth, and we can all have a little yeah. slice. It's just depending where we're. It's like where we're focusing our attention and, and focusing where we where we take meaning from isn't it you know is yeah. what's going to be better is it going to be better that you get the fame and the accolade of being that guy who who did the comic book for batman a handful of times or are you gonna get, take your meaning from carving out your own audience through telling your own stories and hmm. you know yeah, well, the, the history remembers the people who did it first hmm. it doesn't remember the people who who did it second, third, fourth, or fifth, and care mm. about them. Mm. You know, I don't want to be the next Tarantino. I don't want to be the next, next Scorsese. I want to be the first Will Valley. Mm. And I think everybody should want to be the first version of who they are and not the next version of someone who's already done it before them. Mm. Mm. The first best you. Yeah, because you only got one shot. You want to waste your time trying to be someone else? The fuck is that? Bullshit. Yeah. Mm. I was watching a, um, a thing the other day. I can't remember what it was. And it was sort of like where we sort of say like, we're not strong enough or we're not funny enough or we're not pretty enough. And we're like, oh, I really want to be, really want to be that person. Like, let's, just someone that's really famous. I don't know. Oh, I'd really like to be Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Well, yeah. if you want to be Johnny Depp, yeah, you're going to be, going to be attractive. You're going to be a famous film star, but you're, you're also going to be in court at the moment being told that you're a a wife beater. If you want to be that person, Mm. either be all of that person or not. Right. (laughs) You know, nothing Mm. is perfect. And we sort of, we we hold ourselves up and sort of, I think, you know, we we do it. We've been doing it forever that we just look at people and we compare ourselves and and we, and we try and be Mm. competitive, but we're being competitive with the wrong people. We're playing it like a Mm. multiplayer game when really it should be a single player game. It should be, a game that we're playing against ourselves, our past selves. Uh, well, you right. know, like you start running 
oh, I'm never going to be mm. never going to be Mo Farah and be able to run a, a marathon in two hours. But can I run, you know, a mile in this time? And then maybe in a week, oh, I've cut, I've cut a minute off. That's great. I'm never going to be the fastest because mm. it's going to be hard to do that. Maybe you will. Maybe you'll be the best at something in your life. But mm. that shouldn't be the goal, should it? It should be just trying to improve on who you used to be. Mm. It's like expectations uh, are what really cripple people you find mm. like people like particularly when you go into i think what what you were saying will about like um being like a, a cog in like an artist sort of like a cog at, at let's say marvel for example in marvel comics yeah. sure. like pe- people get you see how many people who are artists get like major depression and things like that because they're not doing their own thing I mean, you saw it with, um, with, uh, there was a, 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 uh, who is it? Who are the, who are those Star Wars people? Um, I think it's Collider who, um, who like, they were, they basically just do Star Wars stuff. Right. And one of them was mad about not being invited to something. I think it was like the new, the new theme park. Oh, oh, the, the galaxy's edge. Yeah, yeah, and he was he was mad about not getting invited to that, and he was like, "I'm not good. We're not gonna. I'm not gonna talk about this on our show." And the producer like stepped in and they're having an argument, and it's like, "Ah, oh, that must be soul crushing. Like you can't, mm. you can't do what you want to do, because you answer to this person and this brand, and and yeah. all of that." Well, I think too, especially in in an instance like that. I mean, just from my perspective, it's like like. like uh, <laughs> you're you're upset that you can't do a thing, but it's still a thing that doesn't care if you exist. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like you can you're you're upset about like it's it's like identif- you're identifying with this thing, right? Right. It's it's a consumer culture. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you're saying, hey, like, man, I really wish I was a part of this, but that thing doesn't care if you're a part of it or not because there's a million other yeah. people. But because yes. you have personally attached your identity and your own personal brand to star wars which is really just a yeah. fucking religion you mm. know at this yeah, point, yeah. all it is it's like you're you're not living your best life because you're upset you, you can't go to theme park like come on man like well this guy has other problems than not getting into a theme park yeah that must that's why people are so fucking mad about it and why people are so mad about the last jedi of all things it's like identifying with a brand and then oh, you feel sure. betrayed by a brand that doesn't that has sort of no obligation to you. Hmm. Yeah, and that's all it is. It's like you know what it, it it not only does it have no obligation to you, but it shouldn't have an obligation to you. Its obligation hmm. for anything, right, should be telling what it thinks is the best story that it can possibly do. Uh, let's say, for argument's sake, J.J. Uh, Abrams came out with the Last Jedi. It was the exact same movie, but it was his name came for directing. You know, how do you think people would have taken that? They probably would have. They probably would have apologized for it. Hmm. I, I think people would be really confused. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, you set all this stuff up and you didn't follow. Wait, what? Why didn't you? What? I, actually, I think people. He has a history of doing that <laughs> with Lost. So. Oh yeah. People would probably be like, oh, well, it's J.J. Abrams, isn't it? Yeah. And it would have been, it wouldn't have been an, because inf- at the moment, it's kind of like a, a forest fire. It would have just been kind of a wet fart, I think, <laughs> if J.J. Abrams had come out with a, with The Last Jedi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Or maybe people wouldn't have cared. You know, mm. maybe they wouldn't mm, have maybe. had a rack to hang their coat on and they would have just moved on. Hmm. You know, they, you know, what maybe it would have been such a, you know, internet for, for you know, I mean, that's what I hope. <laughs> yeah, know. well, yeah. 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 It's, it's funny that you get people who are, who are, well, you get people who are attached to the brand for different reasons. And you've got like the, the kind of civil war now between these two halves. And just right. like, just like the, the art has no obligation to the pe- the audience really like the like star wars what, what what am i trying to say 
it's still it's <laughs> hang on words words appear in my brain i've run out of coffee that's the problem mm. hang on right so star wars like so like star wars fans right they're not kind of owed anything from star wars mm. but on, along the same vein star wars isn't people aren't obligated to enjoy it at the same time no, if I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, the, you can't be everything to everybody. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's okay if some people don't like a thing, and if some people do like a thing. You know. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. It is an interesting, uh, and it's an, it's an interesting thing that because it is like a sharp turn. In, in what this thing was. And yeah. now people are like unhappy about it. It's, in, it's interesting. I guess. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I kind of like, I feel like all franchises do this, right? I mean, you have At some point, no. Yeah, it's like, you know, Batman Returns is nothing like Batman 89. I mean, they all have the same <laughs> act. They're mm. not really even close. I mean, they, they, they're totally different universes, you know? Mm. It's mm. just like, uh, that's but in a weird way sometimes i wonder i mean maybe life is like that you know i mean like can you imagine who were 10 years ago and the things that you thought i mean it was a different you know 10 years ago could you tell yourself that donald trump was trump was president no you'd be like what a fucking crazy bullshit lazy writing universe that would be <laughs> well, yeah i remember joking about that with people like when i came to austin it was early 2016 and I remember joking with people like they were going because the, the whole election cycle was, was going on. And I remember people were talking about Trump and I was going, hey, your next president. <laughs> yeah. Thinking that's not going to happen. I bet on it happening. <laughs> I, I put down a bet in the last two weeks. As soon as they said he couldn't do it, I put 20 quid, 20, 20 pounds down. Nice. Just what after what guns? happened. I, it was Good enough. I, th I think I've got three figures out of it. I think about, oh, nice. <laughs> 120, 160 quid or something like that. Oh, because, nice. because Brexit had just happened, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I thought, <laughs> uh, I see a pattern here. Yeah. And then yeah, here yeah. we are. But Never the world under, still hasn't yeah. ended, has it? So. No, well, it's Yet. not over. <laughs> we haven't really. <laughs> Never underestimate people's willingness to want to complain about stuff. Mm. Yeah. You know? and, and because of that, I mean, how many times, I mean, you could almost, that, that's how I knew, I knew Trump was going to win, you know? And that's why, unfortunately, he might re-win mm -hmm. because people are in a position where they can complain and they feel like they're only getting their voice heard because they're complaining. They will mm. actively try to keep that going, mm. you know, because let's say they get what they want. Let's say Trump's ousted, and mm. then what? Mm. And nothing to complain about, right? They got what they wanted, mm. and then no one's no into them anymore. Mm. Mm. That's what's that's more sad and scary than <laughs> I think some people want to think, but it's mm. true. It's almost like it's almost like they, the Democrats, don't want to win. Yeah, yeah, I. Like they, they're in opposition, but they don't seem like they really want to take charge of it. They need to get behind one person. And right now there's like, what, 20 people vying for the spot. And the problem is, is that at least half of them are only there for book deals or to, you know, for people to remember them on their next campaign as governor or senator right. or whatever, like not really interested. Hmm. You know, which means you only have about five or six viable candidates and then they'll pair off, right? And then you'll get, you know, Two or three main tickets with, with vice yeah. vice presidents, and then hmm. and then real real game again, and they're all over you know 110. So one of them will die of a stroke, and then <laughs> you know and then it's like so the process of elimination, and then before you know it, yeah. they end up you know probably Biden and Warren or something like that. Hmm. Yeah, they'll they'll eat each other, yeah, and eat each other and like turn their own sort of fan bases let's say against each other so they won't vote for this person now because 
they sort of ate their candidate and now it's all it's all a mess yeah yeah and that's what happened in the last election Mm. yeah well at least well take it take it as a bright side that you've at least got a leader at the moment because we don't (laughs) oh god we don't do we no no no. It's the G20. It's the G20 in in like a week or something like that, and we don't have a prime minister. Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> who's going? I'll Who do knows? it. Yeah, <laughs> you get the call. <laughs> it was my day. It was my lottery yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I really want to be prime minister, and then the <laughs> then the phone rings. Yeah, it was. <laughs> they were like, "Hey." Uh, we're trying to get in touch with a guy named Ralph. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no. I don't, I don't. <laughs> well, that would be like the, it's like someone going, I really want to be a world leader. And they're like, and their perfect day is okay. But you get Britain, <laughs> you get Britain in its current state. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's I the mean, cautionary no. tale. Enjoy. That's all. It's just one giant Twilight Zone episode. Mm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Careful what you wish for. Mm. Indeed. But that's not to say don't wish, isn't it? You know, we're talking about, mm-hmm. sort of, you know, that, that that lottery day could be out there and it's easier to change, you know, yourself than it is to change the world. But it's mm-hmm. easier, easier than that to complain about the world. Mm. But and if everyone, if everyone makes themselves better, mm. that's going to have a knock-on effect to... Mm society and the world as a whole Mm. i mean you hope so but you know that why do you think that news is 24 hours why do you think that they perpetuate trying to split between republicans and democrats or you know brexit whatever it's just like they want you divided they want you divided because then they can control you Mm. you know if you're not trying to live your best life if Mm. you're you know spending your time arguing with your neighbor Mm. You know, arguing with some guy online over a fucking Star Wars movie, then they're winning. Mm. Mm. You know, that's the biggest waste and saddest part. Is it's like, and the thing is, is people they attach themselves to these what they assume are these. You know, uh, I don't know how you put it. Just the, the, this this life. Mm. They, yeah. Like it's like a goal, right? These these ethics, and it's just like, nah, you, you're just doing someone else's bidding. You're not being your original person. You're just, you know, you're being a moron. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you're just in the tribe. Yeah. Yeah. Beat it, just, beating your chest to the same way as everyone else. Because it's easier right. to, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. easier to do that. It's easier to join a tribe and say, hey, look at me, I'm the same as you. And you've got people mm. around you and you've got this sort of this false sense of doing something, you know, to save the world. Yeah. But when mm. really probably focusing on yourself and trying to carve your... So just a tiny little piece of the pie mm. would be so much it's like better. Z- it's like zebra. Like um, zebra aren't black and white to blend in with the desert. They're black and white to blend in with all the other zebra. Right. Because of safety in numbers. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's why ones that, yeah. That's why ones that get tagged get eaten by lions first because they stick out. Right. Mm. So people don't, so people with safety in numbers, people don't necessarily want to strive for more things, to, to be better. Mm. Well, it takes got, a lot to want to, right? You have, yeah. you have to be able to stick, out, stick your head out and say, I'm not going to be part of this zebra clan. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. You know? mm. You'd have all these zebras jump on you and like, hey, no, you're not of us. You're the enemy. And it's like, mm. no, that's not how it works. work. Mm. You know? And it's like the, the crabs in the bucket pulling you back down. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I, a, lot I of animal, a lot of animal things with that, isn't there? Yeah. That's what, that's what animals are. Right? Mm. I've, I've had plenty of experience with that, especially working in multiple jobs where you just like, you know, nobody wants to hear the truth. They don't want to hear why they, they think what they think. They, you know, I've, I can't even tell you many conversations I've had with people where they, you know, you just ask them why they think what they think they can't tell you mm. they just mm. you know they leave it as the best you know way to stay alive for you know their own sake 
Mm. But really, it's just because they're doctrined into a way of thinking, but they don't really know. You know, they just they know that the people around them think that, and it's it's easier and safer. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they have a, an idea as to how the world works. And mm. this this is on the left end. Of it. This is not just conservative people. I mean, there are plenty of would say a whole you know ninety percent of the left base is just well, we think equality for everyone, and this is how we're going to get it, and this is you know going to be beneficial. It's like yeah, but you're not really thinking big picture. You think you mm. are. That doesn't always work like that. You know, mm. it's like you're skipping is... to step three. You're skipping <laughs> to step three and ignoring step two. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, well, it'll be easier if everyone has a universal income. Okay, so now everyone makes the same amount of money. Are you going to go to work? Because I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well, it's, damn. It's, yeah. yeah. What were we talking about? <laughs> Uh, king of the ants. King of uh, the ants. You Strive love to be king of the ants. Strive to be. Actually, king no, of... don't, because that's that's, just be... that's like striving to be a dictator. Don't strive to be king of the ants. Well, I mean, what I'm hearing is just strive to have the best lottery day you can, because you never know when it's going to come. You know, if you don't put the effort in, then that day is going to be a fucking waste of time. But. If you do, then, yeah. you know, you might strike it lucky. And if you're going, if you are putting that effort in, then you're going to be more set to deal with that. It's like, it's like actually, if you actually won the lottery and just came into all that money, most of them, they go bankrupt, don't they? Or just uh, either lose all of it or lose more than they had to start with. Because they're like, oh, mm. they fuck, all this cash, bang, gone. You know? Yeah. Well, some of them die too because they mm. think they're untouchable. Yeah, so like yeah. they drive sports cars, they go skydiving, <laughs> like mm. just put in the spaghetti on a sidewalk. Mm. Mm. So, be so the, we we start being the king of the ants of your off. own story, I think. Be the king <laughs> of that? your own of your own movie. I think everyone is right. I mean, you have to try to be. Yeah, mm. just try and make it a good movie. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, That's good. We rather... we ended up we started off with a with a with a different question, and we've answered another, maybe even bigger question via tangents, mm. and done a rare mm. thing where we actually end on a high note, which is indeed, <laughs> which is bizarre. <laughs> what a shift! <laughs> I think I'm going to have to have a lie down after this. Um, but before well, I do, um, yeah, tell us tell us about where we can find you, Will. Or, well, not us. We know where we can find you, but uh, everyone's yeah, listening. You know, uh, you know kilmoon.com. And, uh, you know, we have audio and we have video every other week. Um, and, you know, we have conversations that were not nearly as long-winded. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we've been doing it. I think we've been up for a couple of months now and uh, it's going very well. Or, or you can go to SoundCloud, go to the Double Toasted SoundCloud page. Uh-huh. And you can you can think of the show that I do it's a night class and uh, you know you know you, the older episodes but you know they you know they're full so you can watch it there too. Mm. Brilliant. Well, we'll put that all up in mm-hmm. the uh, in the description because it's been mm. you you've brought a uh, a positive slant to this podcast and I'm I'm still trying to get over it but it's been <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly been have- something. <laughs> <laughs> Any last words from you, Matt? No, nah, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm feeling quite happy now, so I'm all good. <laughs> quite elated. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. Final words. Just live your best life, guys. You know, hashtag, hashtag live, live your best life. Love your best life, and uh, you know, hope you do it. Um, Christ, I'm, I'm all out of sorts. I've never finished it like this. Um, <laughs> like and subscribe, <laughs> but <laughs> instead of doing that, go out and live your life. Because maybe you can do it. God, I need to sit down. Right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> this has all got, got too much for me. Love you. Bye. <laughs>